Okay, at this time we don't have a quorum to call a city council meeting to order. So what we're gonna do is uh, have uh, Chairman Wolf come up and conduct the meeting for the Public Works Committee. And if uh, in the ensuing time we do get uh, another two aldermen to attend, so we have 11 present, then we could still hold the city council meeting after the Public Works Committee meeting. So, Wolf, the chair is yours. I need to give one to Henry. I'd like to call to order the uh, meet, the joint meeting of Public Works and Finance and Personnel. Right now, it's just going to be Public Works, so please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you for that. <coughs> All right. Um, like to uh, ask for a motion to approve the minutes of our last meeting. So moved. Second. Thank you for that. Um, I guess we'll go right into six point six point one. Nope. Six point. Have to go to four point two. So it's I want all to keep going in this one. To adjourn? No, right here. Confirmations. All right, so we're going to go into 2.1, and I apologize for the confusion. Uh, we're going to discuss the confirmation of City Hall project plan and budget. Are we going to vote on the? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, John, we are going to vote. Um, for the uh, motion to uh, approve the minutes, there was a motion and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Now we'll go to 2.1, confirmation of City Hall project plan and budget. Um, Dave Buell. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to have uh, Steve Gunan from Bright Architects, our principal architect on this project give the committee and, and, the, and those in the audience an update on where we've been so far with the project plans and how where we're at today and uh, have them go over those details with you okay thank you david um, again my name is stephen kunin i'm also uh, joined here with my associate stephen yeager who is uh, in the audience but we've both been uh, working on the project <laughs> Um, the last time, the last direction we had was to uh, proceed with the, with the design that you see up on the screen, and that is essentially to um, add a, a new addition to the north side of the building. So what you're looking at up there is the north side of the building. The idea being to open the, open the building up, bring a lot, lot more natural light in, a north light. Um, and then create kind of an atrium space in the center of the building which would vertically connect all the departments. And the ultimate goal is to provide, I think, a, uh, a much better work environment for the city employees and also a very uh, uh, kind of customer-friendly uh, uh, atmosphere for any of the uh, city uh, taxpayers who are going to come and do business at the, at the city hall. So, um, really, we're creating a whole new, uh, a whole new entry, uh, a formal entry on the north side. The, the, the existing entrance, which we're kind of looking at as more of a uh, uh, kind of historical entry, would still be there, and that's the one off of um, uh, Cent Cent Center. Center Street. Thank you. I should know that. <laughs> and. Um, so anyway, I'll, I'll go through the, I, what, what my intention is, is to go through the plans, show you where we've been. We've been working hard. We've met with all the departments a number of times. We have uh, uh, come up with a floor plan that I think works for the most part for everyone in the, in the building. We're going to continue to work with each department um, as we move through this. We have got all of our engineers engaged. We've done a lot of work with our structural engineer, as you can imagine. 
Um, we've, we've had meetings with, uh, with both public works staff as well as um, our uh, electrical engineers, plumbing engineers, our fire engineers, and we've really got a good handle on what, it, what it's going to take to kind of take this to the finish line. Um, uh, we've also got a, a meeting set up with the state of Wisconsin to get a, an initial uh, review. Um, so we're really on track to, to move this forward um, and go out to bid, we hope, in, in the spring and then start construction. So with that, maybe we go to the next page. So these are fl uh, plans of, of the lower level, the basement um, on the lower um, half of the of the sheet, and then the first plan on the upper half. And maybe I'll start with the uh, with the first floor. That's where the majority of people will be coming into the building. You can see the uh, up at the top of the plan is the the new entryway, which would come off of a plaza. Um, with those plazas, the plaza would be uh, equipped with handicap ramps, so anyone in a wheelchair could get up there um, without without an issue. And then we've got. Uh, Doors going into a, a major, uh, kind of the main lobby space. Anyone, move, anyone uh, uh, entering the building would then immediately see either the city clerk, which is on the left-hand side, or uh, we've got finance and human resources on the, uh, the right-hand side. Um, and the idea would be that there would be some open counter space, similar to what you have now, but the majority of the of the business being done would be done from these two uh, uh, or these three departments. The other thing we've done is we've created uh, uh, conference rooms that are that can be accessed by either the departments themselves or, uh, uh, for instance, if someone came into a meeting, they wouldn't necessarily have to go into the into the uh, uh, department space. They could go right into the conference room. So there's. And the, the idea of the conference rooms aren't necessarily owned by each department, they're really owned by the entire building and they're to be used by community groups or, or uh, for whatever business uh, is happening during the day and open to, to anyone. Um, so again, we've got human resources on the right uh, and finance and then city clerk on the left. We're also showing um, additional uh, toilet space, all upgraded toilet rooms, handicapped accessible. Um, and we're also showing two stair towers. These would replace the existing uh, fire escapes. Uh, those would be fire enclosed, uh, added, added for safety. A new elevator shaft that would go from the basement floor level all the way up to the, uh, the fourth level, which we're gonna talk about, which is the mechanical space now, the proposed mechanical space. Um, and notice that we're keeping the uh, stairway, that historic stairway, and that would be refurbished and uh, uh, kind of taken apart and put back together to refurbish the marble and um, the, the railings and really restore it to what, what it was earlier. In the, ba in the basement or lower level would be the IT department. Um, we've located them, that's the green area, we've located them. Uh, in the portion of the basement that has natural light. So they would get natural light. We, the intent would be to um, reglaze the openings down there or replace, replace any of the grates that need to be replaced. Um, and they would have their, uh, all of their um, uh, office space there. The server room itself would be up on the, up on the fourth floor and I'll show that again. Um, we've also got the appraisers down here. The appraisers are, are, are part of finance, but they really have their own space, and so there would be room for them uh, down in the basement, and again, they would be located so that they get some natural light down there. And the intent would be that this, this would, would be um, completely renovated. Uh, we've also got a lot of storage space down here. It probably wouldn't be, it would be renovated, but not finished to the, to the uh, level that the other spaces would be because it would be unoccupied space. Um, but we have a training room down uh, off of the technologies that would be used primarily for the IT training, but open to anyone. So, um, so I'll move up to the second floor. So at the top of the second floor, if, if, you were, if you came into the first floor and you weren't going to do business with finance or human resources or the city clerk, they would say, well, just head right up the steps. And you would head up those main stairway there and you would immediately hit the uh, planning and development uh, department. And that would again would be an open, open uh, shelf there, very inviting. 
Um, but you really wouldn't be able to get into the, into, it would be secured from the public, the, uh, the, the offices and the, and the workers. And so, again, they could go, they could, you could be directed into any of the conference rooms off of that main area, and the staff could meet you in those conference rooms. Um, I should point out that the gray area here is sort of the open uh, uh, corridor space, an open space. And you also notice that white area in there, that's where we intend to open up that floor to, to above. So there, again, there would be this atrium that would serve to connect the spaces vertically, but also to bring natural light into all of those, all of the internal uh, spaces. Um, up on, finally, up on the, uh, uh, the third floor, we, we uh, propose um, turning the council chambers kind of back into the space that it was. So that wall back there would come out. Um, these, the ceiling would be raised. There is a skylight underneath here that is intact. As part of the roofing, we would bring a new skylight in, bring natural light into this area, kind of restore it to the way it was back in, in uh, uh, 1916 when the building was built. Also, these windows would all be replaced here. That third set of that palladium window would be um, also part of this space. So if you can just imagine this being a lot wider, open up that, that space and then a kind of a glass wall over here that would just welcome people in. And then the layout of this room would change as well. The dais would be up in front of these, these windows and the audience would be, forced, uh, would be facing that way um, towards the, the city council. Uh, uh, dais. So, um, and then to the uh, off to the uh, to the right side, we're showing the mayor's uh, suite, the mayor and ad administrator suite. Um, they have uh, a, a conference room that would be connected, similar to the one they've got now, that would be connected by both the uh, to both the chambers and the uh, the suite, their suite. On the left side of the plan, we're showing a uh, space that would be. Um, used for for the staff for their lunch lunch needs and kind of a staff lounge any training needs that would that would need to happen there and just some some place for the staff to go and decompress and and uh, and relax and then again um, we're showing a larger toilet space here on the th on the uh, the third floor that would accommodate all, if, if you had a full house in the in the chambers um, and then do we have the Fourth floor, yeah, okay, the next plan would be the fourth floor. And right now there are two spaces up there, um, not real usable space, so we're, and we don't need the space. We, were, we accommodated all the departments we need to in the other floors, but we do need new mechanical space because this space would be now um, air conditioned and heated and we would need uh, space for our air handlers and boilers and such. So the, the idea would be that this fourth floor would be um, Enclosed the the stairs would the main stair would no longer go up to that we would access that via the stair on the left But the the elevator which is on the right you can sort of see it um, would access that uh, Fourth floor so so it would be you know for any kind of maintenance and, su and such plus we're showing the server room up there uh, The server room for the for the computer racks and such so that space becomes uh necessary and, and very usable mechanical space for the building. So the, again, the idea is that this would be essentially a brand new building because we're looking at, at uh, gutting the interiors for the most part, taking all the asbestos out, taking all the lead paint out, um, and, and then uh, rebuilding it um, in, a, in a contemporary office fashion with really the heart of, of the building being the, the stairway and this room kind of uh, paying homage to the historical nature of the building. And of course the exterior as well is, would be restored, new windows, <coughs> new roof, uh, uh, any energy efficiencies that we, can, that we can put in there, you know, additional insulation and such on the roof, that would be uh, brought back to the way it was back in 1916 and hopefully last another hundred years. So, so um, what does all this cost? I think that's the next. Um, by the way, I, I think I mentioned we're about 30% done with our, with our work. There are a lot more drawings. We didn't want to bore you with all the kind of uh, you know, engineering drawings and, the, and that sort of detail, although it is available for anyone who might be interested. Um, right now, we're showing the, uh, the, the general um, uh, construction cost. And it would be the, the, the cost that once this went out to bid, it would be the cost that we would 
uh, ex expect to see from a general contractor who would hold all the um, contracts for the subcontracts. And right now we are looking at a budget of about eight point eight million dollars for that to construct that. And that again would be a total gut and and renovating it to the to the uh, plans that you saw above. Um, and, and we, we went through this with our, uh, we took, we did actual takeoffs of the building and we spent a lot of time going through the, the previous reports that were done with the building. We called in some experts to talk about things like uh, 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 brick reconstruction and some of the stone reconstruction, uh, tuck pointing, uh, roof needs, all those kinds of things. And so we feel really confident about this budget. Um, and then below that line, we've got, uh, oh, by the way, that 8.7, that, con that contains uh, uh, an estimating contingency. At this point, we always like to hold a little bit of contingency because we still have things that we just don't know um, the, 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 the final numbers on. And so there is a contingency now that we're holding of about $250,000, um, which is about 3% of that construction cost. Uh, as we get closer and no more, that might come down, although we don't want to, we can't bring that down to zero because again, we need to hold some for, uh, for construction. The, uh, below that line then are the soft costs, the things that are not, uh, that, that need to be accounted for but aren't necessarily part of the construction. Things such as uh, the architect's engineering fee, although that's a great bargain uh, there. Uh, <laughs> I thought I'd mention that. Uh, the construction, con we do have a construction contingency there of about 4%, and that, again, as we, uh, we want to hold that, that's really for the, for the uh, city to hold during construction. So if anything, you know, something, we open up a wall and there's some things that, that need to be um, uh, taken care of that we didn't anticipate that you can use that. Our goal would be to not have to use any of that, but that's pretty much an impossibility. We know that every construction project, especially one um, with so many unknowns, is going to need some uh, some additional funds. So, uh, and then we're talking, we've got things like uh, uh, geotechnical services. Uh, some of that actually has already occurred. We're getting some soil borings and things like that. Um, environmental engineering services. That is the uh, abatement of the asbestos, any lead paint. We have a report and I know that I think the, the city is working on, on getting uh, harder numbers on that. Right now we're carrying about $100,000 for that. Um, you know, th various permitting, uh, permitting fees, uh, plan approval fees, uh, we've, we've, builder's risk, we've put in numbers for moving and relocation services, uh, furniture and fixed equipment. Actually, this is showing $850,000 and we, we just got it after this was done, we got a, a, a much better estimate from a, from a firm from about, for about $600,000. So that's, there's a $200,000, uh, I guess you could call it savings at this point, um, that we see that, that is not reflected in here. Uh, and then things like uh, for, uh, furnishings and fixed equipment, uh, those would be things like televisions and, and uh, uh, you know, any, anything that would be required beyond, um, beyond casework and things like that. A telephone system, the council chambers, audio, video, um, legal insurance technology switches and such. And then if you continue to go down, we've just listed a lot of things that aren't included um, th that we see, we just do this as a format. Uh, typically we would see some of these things on this project. We don't anticipate a lot of these. Obviously you've got land. We don't need that. Uh, design of non-conventional footings, we, we, we don't see a need for that. So anyway, we just wanted to list some of the things that aren't included uh, just for clarification purposes. But those soft costs come in at about 2.1 million, so the total project sort of turnkey cost would, we're looking at about 10.9, or if you take off 200,000 from that, that updated furniture, about 10.7 million for the entire project cost. So that's kind of where we're at to date, and uh, happy to take any questions that you might have. Yes, sir. Yes, Henry. Uh, just two questions popping in my head right away. Uh, number one is, what is the logic with putting the uh, servers up on the fourth floor and the IT in the basement rather than having them in close proximity? 
And then the other question is, I think I noticed on the second floor you don't have bathrooms anymore, is that correct? Uh, no, we have bathrooms on the second floor, but they are, um, they're, they're more, they're uh, sort of single hole toilets uh -huh. because we don't see a lot of, uh, it was just the office workers up there. We don't see a lot of, uh, like up on the third floor where, where you've got a lot of public there. So that was the rationale behind that. And as far as, um, we, we just, in, in talking with our um, uh, HVAC consultant, we need to get air, you know, we need to get air throughout the whole building. If we have it on just the lower level, our, um, our chases need to be much larger because we have to get it to the floor. Steve, did you want to? I think the question was about the server room right. itself. And the server room, and too, it yeah. Was in the And then the, and the HVAC was because we wanted to get some above and below so that we can feed from both ends. A little bit more efficient that way. Any additional questions? Um, Jim, please use your mics. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, would be some of the reductions uh, that you got, the $200,000, would that be from the type of finishes that are going to be used or where did that, do you know exactly where the savings came in? Well, what we did, you know, as, as architects, we don't, um, we, we do some, it, it's from the furniture estimate is really what it was from. And we actually, we've done a, a, a plan, but we thought it would be a good idea to go out to a vendor and ask them uh, to get a better uh, handle on that. So we, we took our plan, sent it to a vendor, a local vendor here, and asked them um, to put a reasonable cost to, the, to what it would cost to furnish this. And that's what they came back with. We were a little bit high there because we're not as adept at, at uh, estimating furniture as they would be. So. And then just to follow up, uh, would you consider this uh, plan to be a Rolls-Royce, a Chevrolet, or a Volkswagen? And I'm talking about, you know, the various finishes. Are we talking about, you know, quartz countertops, granite countertops, laminate? You know, where, where are yeah. we on the scale of finishes and where does that figure into the cost? Yeah, and that's a, great, that's a great question. We haven't selected all of our finishes yet. That's still, still to come. But I think the, the, the uh, strategy we're using is to look at finishes that are going to last a long time. We would not anticipate putting plastic laminate. Maybe on the casework we would, but for the service counters, we wouldn't do that because we'd, you'd be replacing them in five years. So, so the areas of heavy traffic, like on the first floor, we would like to use terrazzo floor in there because we know... If we're looking at this lasting another 100 years, uh, you know, with maintenance, it could do that. I just have to put that caveat in there. But um, a, a, a terrazzo floor will last forever. And, um, but we wouldn't do that up in the upper floors where maybe they're not getting as much traffic. We'd put carpet in there, more re you know, which is more reasonable. But at any of the, uh, the counters where, where there's going to be uh, a lot of use, we'd probably look at a, at a quartz or uh, something similar to that so that <laughs> Again, so that maybe a little bit more cost up front, but certainly it's going to last longer. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Alder Donahue. Uh, thanks. I just had a, a couple questions. And I, this is kind of ancient history. When we were looking at the original space that we either had or we thought we would need in City Hall, for some reason, and maybe David uh, Beeble knows this, um, I have 26,000 square feet in my head as opposed to 40,000, 41,000. Mm -hmm. um, is, that, is that about right or are we at 40,000 now and we're not really expanding anything? Yeah, well, right, the, right now we are at 40,900 and that's with um, this new addition that we put on here, which is about 6,100 square feet of that. Um, and when we originally programmed a new city hall, um, we thought we, would, we could get all the people in there in about 26,000 square feet. What, what, what this shows is that, um, and you can see, we've got some space for growth in here. Um, we've got a lot of space in the basement. We're probably only using a third of the basement. So the rest of that is, is either future space or storage. We've got... Um, space up on the third floor um, that is that could be moved into there's additional like office space up there and so 
Um, so there's, I guess the answer is there, were, because we have an existing footprint here, we wanted to use as much as we could. And so um, it's, it's showing more square footage than if we were to build a brand new building where we could make it really, really efficient. Um, we could probably do that closer to 26,000 square feet. Although okay, so at, I think it was $267 a square foot, that's, that's substantial. Mm -hmm. Substantial addition. Okay, um, just a couple of other things. Just on the on the soft costs, um, and and this I guess would be a question for David or maybe Daryl. Um, are we contemplating a? I would hope, or I would assume, a construction manager or an owner's rep. I, I can address that, and Dave uh, can supplement. Uh, th that's been discussed internally as, as an option, so a construction manager would be hired to augment uh, uh, architects, to value engineer, uh, and then ultimately to uh, uh, be the owner's representative uh, as we go out to bid. Uh, you as a common council could decide whether you want that construction manager to be eligible to bid them themselves for some of the work or whether you want to restrict their services simply to being our, our representative or a construction manager. Uh, typically, that comes at a cost, at roughly 2% uh, of the overall project. And ultimately, I guess we need to decide whether we think this, the scope of this project, whether we think we'll recoup our, the 2% cost and hopefully some more uh, by adding that, that extra sort of element to the overall project. Uh, good news for us is that we have uh, a couple firms in, in our backyard, so to speak, that uh, could perform this role, but also these same companies we hope will have an interest in this project and will sharpen their pencil and, and give us uh, you know, a great bid price. And then they, in essence, would <clears throat> take on the responsibility of not only, in essence, being construction manager, but overseeing all, all the subs and finding the best subs, you know, hopefully at the best price. So, uh, so we have looked at that. Uh, based upon the idea coming up in the last month. Uh, at this point in time, I'm probably more inclined uh, based upon, I'm, I guess I'm not confident at this point that we would recoup that 2% or more by having a, a construction manager. My hope is that uh, going the more traditional route, um, again, especially with having a couple contractors uh, within the borders of, of the city of Sheboygan, uh, will ultimately get a, a better price. Uh, sometimes with construction manager, it's difficult to separate out uh, the different work, and uh, and sometimes you get you know some finger pointing uh, as to who's supposed to perform certain roles. But having one contractor in charge and having to coordinate all the subs and ultimately take the risk uh, that would be the more traditional route as opposed to construction manager. Okay. And, and I, so I, I, I'm just, and there are maybe a couple of these um, not included costs that we'll probably add something on, as well as our relocation costs and so forth. Okay. Um, and in, oh, I think that's it for now. Thanks. Um, Alder uh, Reinflesh, you had some questions? I was wondering about security on the first the first floor level plans. We seem to have an entrance from the north, that's the main entrance, and then we get a couple doors from the south that are still gonna be open for people to come. Uh, there isn't any real security kind of situation, and it's pretty, it would be just pretty open. Are we intending that there, there should be a staff person in that desk that's kind of by the north atrium area? Uh, can we get back to that plan? Maybe we could talk through that. I, you know, that's a great point. And we did talk about security. And I think we, we, we sort of talked about a card system, right? You know, where the, the, where the employees would each have a, a, a card access, or there would be card access. Everybody would have a card. They couldn't get into these, um, into the staff colored areas without that card. So that every, you know, any, and, and so the, the, the open area, um, yeah, it would be unsecured in that anybody could come in there, but but they would be there would be a uh, sort of a, a, a security uh, barrier between the public and the people in the office. 
Um, and then how you would, you know, if you had say, an active shooter or something, I guess that's something we would need to talk through as to how we, uh, how we would uh, address that. Um, that would be a whole, a whole other discussion, I think. There are certainly things we can do to mitigate that. Did you want to add anything to that? Or no? Daryl, you had a, a statement? Yeah, I, I wanted to follow up to Alder Donahue, uh, who uh, brought up the issue of what our minimum square footage needs are versus what's being programmed uh, in, in this plan. Uh, some of the, uh, as Steve alluded to, uh, we're working within the existing um, uh, square footage, uh, the size, uh, of the existing structure and uh, s staff met a couple times to discuss uh, our concern for that inefficiency as well and a lot of it centered around the fact that we have this historic stairwell and it takes up a lot of room uh, so we actually asked uh, Stephen and his firm to do a, a redesign where we basically eliminated the historic stairwell and came up with a brand new set of stairs, kind of pushing it a little bit further to the north, turning it sideways to, again, really maximize the square footage. Uh, and ultimately, uh, the management staff who are based here at City Hall expressed concern that whether it be you as the alders or the community uh, really are anticipating that that stairwell will remain intact and, in essence, sort of embellish it uh, as, as really the only as one of the key linkage, linkages of the interior of the structure existing to its, its future. So as uh, staff recognizes, you know, the question that you raise and ultimately uh, our recommendation is to incorporate it, uh, I guess embrace it. Uh, it does allow, as Steve mentioned, light to flow up and down to allow sort of a visual connection, but Cost-wise, yeah, there is a there is in essence a cost to keeping it intact. I guess I just wanted to add to that one of the concerns I ha I've had um, when it comes to City Hall. I've been an advocate, as a as you guys know, for a new construction. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but originally, the staircase was presented as the focal point because of its grandeur and. And that and th some of the questions that came up originally were why are we turning the front end of the building to the back end of the building and your focal point was to change the back end of the building to glass and open it up because of the staircase correct me if I'm wrong and then later you guys talked about well the staircase is too big and it's going to be very costly so again we're spending a lot of money trying to maintain or fix and turn this into something even better. Wait, Dave? If, I'm gonna go back in time a little bit, which really, Mr. Rogers. why we're here. And the reason was, is we had some structural issues with this building. The reason the north wall is being opened up is because we're having quite a bit of failure of the mortar and the rust pack and the windows. And it's gonna require, regardless if we stay here or not, there's going to be significant structural work that's going to be needed on this north facade, masonry work. That was one component. The mechanical system in this building, we have a steam boiler. We have really no forced air, as you can tell, with air conditioning, with window units, um, not very efficient. We, have, we need a new roof. So just the structural and mechanical type of issues was anywhere from three and a half to four and a half million dollars for this building. So that started the discussion. What do we do? Where do we go? So we looked at options. Should we stay here or should we build new? And so we looked at those options and building use committee had about eight different options to look at building new sites versus remaining here. And through that process, yes, if we build a city hall for today, just today, it's 26,000 square feet. Are we going to be 26,000 feet 25 years from now? So when we build a new building, we really need to think beyond just what we're today currently occupying this building. So that was one of the limitations. The other limitation is if we build new, what do we do with City Hall? If we vacate it, it's still going to need three or four million dollars worth of improvements to get it back structurally sound and, and usable either for repurposed or some other function. So 
if we sell this building knowing that it's in that condition and that's, we know that already and we've been discussing that, is that type of incentive that we're gonna have to give to a developer to take this over? So when you start weighing that cost from building at a new site which can be more efficient and maybe more cost effective, but then you have the backside of it is what do you do with City Hall and those costs? So that you have to add those two costs together. You can't just separate them and say, let's build new, it's only gonna cost us $6 million and we're good. Oh, now what about City Hall? And now we're gonna have another vacant building potentially if we don't have a developer lined up. And we may have those potential costs for future development and incentives to get this repurposed and get it back in the market. So through all that type of discussion, Building Use Committee went round and round, weighed all these decisions, and, and the decision was, and the council made the decision that, you know, City Hall is 100 years old, and the community has some real sentiment to this building, and it has some historical value to the community. There's, there's recognition of this building in the community. So the decision at that time was to remain in this facility, preserve the exterior facade, keep that history, but do it interior in the interior in a more modern, efficient manner to conduct city hall business. And that's how we got to this point. Um, so what we're looking for tonight is, happy to answer a lot of these questions, but I guess we're, we're at a stage that do we continue along this path. We're at 30% design. And in order to continue on this path, we need some, basically, getting some feedback from you that the concept is good, we support this, we'd like to see this further refined because we're, we're, we're engaged now with the architects. And if we're gonna continue this process, we're, we're making commitments along, this, along the way. And if we don't, we gotta, we gotta just step back and hold the brakes and then we have to think of other options. But, Timing one way or the other, there's, there's structural needs at this facility that are gonna to have to be addressed. And in a lot of cases, they're gonna be very disruptive to the occupants of this building. If we wanna put central air in this facility and get rid of the window units, or even replace the windows, we're gonna to have to <coughs> relocate offices on a temporary basis and it's gonna be costly, costly to do that. And if we'd wanna do that piecemeal, the costs are just gonna to continue to escalate because you're doing it instead of all at one type of project over a 12 to 16 month period, you're gonna be doing it probably over a three to four year period and your costs are gonna escalate. And it's gonna be more cost effective to do it all as one project versus the piecemeal project. So um, just wanted to provide that background of how, how did we get to today in these plans of where, where, we, where we came from, I guess. Thank you. Um, just one more, one more question for Daryl, and then I'll go to uh, Alder Sorensen. Um, Daryl, in this, in this list of costs, we don't have any costs, do we, that are for the movement of personnel as far as equipment set up, um, because we're looking at the, uh, the old, the new building that we purchased, the Social Security building, and then possibly another location to be able to fit everybody in. Is that in this? Uh, 10 million, 900? Uh, as Steve alluded to, uh, there is a, basically a footnote in here uh, as far as uh, the size of, of the allowance. Uh, it's only $10,000. The expectation is uh, the cost to uh, set up, in essence, new, new offices uh, in another location. Uh, as many of you are aware, the city uh, has in essence asked itself, are there any uh, existing city facilities that could accommodate us? Uh, we have sort of a, uh, an opportunity, uh, the council took the opportunity when the Social Security Administration uh, building, as you alluded to, uh, opened up. We think at least two, maybe two and a half to three departments could relocate there, but uh, the vast majority will not fit in that building. Uh, so in addition to looking at other existing city or municipal facilities, uh, we're looking at, we've been in contact with uh, Sheboygan County to see if they have any facilities. We had hoped earlier tonight to maybe take a tour of one of the options. Unfortunately, uh, the legal open records or open meetings requirement, it got just too unmanageable. So we'll, we'll set that tour up for another time. 
the cost to uh, relocate some of our our file, you know, locate files regardless of where we go uh, will need to occur. Again, we, we've had offers from other cities uh, managers who are willing to at least provide us with storage in other existing government facilities, but uh, actually housing staff for a, roughly a 15 month period of time. Uh, we will, you know, we will need to, to go elsewhere. That cost is not in here. Uh, some of the advantages of looking at other municipal facilities or other county facilities, uh, we at least are able to take advantage of the ring of fiber. Uh, so from an IT perspective, at least the connectivity uh, will have a minimal cost there. Um, and again, some of these facilities, they do have some phones and existing offices already in place that hopefully it will minimize the cost of retrofit, but, but 10,000 uh, will, will need to, we, we, will, we will need to add to that price tag. All right, thank you, Daryl. Alder uh, Sorensen. I know you, <clears throat> excuse me, I know you alluded uh, kind of through your presentation about um, kind of the conference room setup. Um, and I'm kind of looking at the basement right now. I know that there's um, currently there's uh, a meeting room in the basement. And are you feeling like the, the replacement for that, for that meeting room space would be, you know, one of the conference rooms on the on the first floor. How would you accommodate those extra meeting spaces? Are you are you thinking those meeting committee meetings could be held in the council chambers? Uh, right. The the first floor com, uh, conference space to the left um, is a pretty large space. It would be very similar to the, what we have on the third floor. Okay. Because um, I'm I'm in, just thinking in, like in, for in, a, in, and for a larger yeah. the council chambers will be set up multi-purpose. Okay. So it is, is if we can go maybe to the third floor, the, the concept is is that the older persons will be at, at, at the dais uh, along the windows. So the committee members could hit, use it for committee meetings, sit in their normal seats, and then the public could be out in the gallery. But those, the, the chairs will have chairs and it'll be stackable. We'll be able to m use it for open meetings and other public presentations and public hearings. So it'll be a little bit more multi-purpose. We're currently, as you're familiar, this room is pretty fixed and it's not very conducive necessarily to other public meetings. Okay, thank you. Alder Donahue. Uh, <clears throat> just a couple of follow-up things. Um, and thank you for the, <laughs> that was gonna be one of my questions. Because when I was looking at the plans, I couldn't see where you'd put the alders. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe we would just be hanging out the windows or something. So, so I do appreciate that, and uh, and the fact that 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 will be a multi-purpose room, I think, is 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 a really good idea and a, a more modern and democratic, and small d uh, democratic setup. I think will will work very well for us. Um, I'm also really happy in the original plan. From my perspective, and people's opinions about this building vary. Some people are very attached to it. Some people think that in terms of historicity, it really doesn't present much. I'm sort of in that latter category, but I do love that staircase. I mean, I think that if there's anything in this building that's worth preserving, it's the staircase. Um, and so I'm really glad to see that your revised plan really opens that up so much because in the first plan, it really, um, from from my perspective, it would have been very closed in and, and, and very claustrophobic, so I'm happy to see that. And I'm sure that <clears throat> some of the increased square footage um, really does include some of that extra space. Um, and I'm not objecting to the 40,000 per, per se. I was just surprised at that large increase. And I would take, I think that in 25 years, city government will have shrunk considerably. I think we'll have fewer staff people. I think our space needs are going to be reduced dramatically. So I don't think we need to plan for expansion. But there are always things that you can do with a, um, you know, I mean, we can lease space out and, and that sort of thing. So I don't think that's the end of the world either. Like Alder Wolf, um, I had, really strongly felt that either new construction or looking at other possibilities was a much more financially viable piece of this. Uh, and I've kind of given up on that. Um, and I think with Governor Walker's very tragic decision to essentially do away with historical tax credits, if we had decided to go into another building or construct, 
all of our plans about being able to use this building uh, and turn it around into, into housing, which had seemed to me to be such an excellent idea, really depended on those historical tax credits. So going forward, not only Sheboygan, but all communities are really, their historical buildings are in much greater danger at this point because there will be no incentive or money available to repurpose buildings. So, so I think we're here. I think as I look at it, probably ultimately the cost <clears throat> when everything is added in is probably 12 to 12.5 million. And that seems like a lot of money, and it is. Um, but this again, from my perspective, when my parents died, you know, we sold, my brother had been living in the house, we sold the house. We didn't sell it for anywhere near as much money as I thought it was gonna be worth. And then I realized we really hadn't taken care of it. It needed a new roof, it needed a new furnace, it needed uh, new windows, and all of those things would need to be done by the ensuing owner. We didn't take care of this building. This is a classic example of either not taking care of your roads or not taking care of your facilities and just putting your head in the sand and saying, you know, people don't want to pay more money. Well, I'm just looking at this as a forward payment for all the times in the past when we didn't invest like we should have and we didn't take care of things like we should have. Now we're paying the price. It's like when we didn't take care of our roads and now we're paying the price, but we're doing it, and so I think that's fine. Um, and so uh, I'm not losing sleep on this one anymore, and I would support going forward. I just think, you know, eyes open, it's certainly gonna be somewhat more than $11 million, um, you, you know, one way or the other, and we just need to, to take that into account, and I think now's the time to move forward. Thank you. Daryl, you had some statements? Uh, that, that's a great transition uh, into uh, wanting to discuss, begin the discussion regarding the, the finances or, or the budget itself. Sorry. Um, one second, Daryl. Uh, Mr. Bellinger? I've just got a question on the timing. Um, and I think this plan is, is great. I commend you and your company on the, on the work that you did, and, and thank you for that. And um, uh, you mentioned um, that putting it out to bid in the spring and getting started to work, and that kind of you know took my breath away a little bit. Um, it seems like a long time ago, the building use committee made this recommendation. We were going to move forward. The council approved it, and now we're 30 percent design. And I'm just wondering if there's anything we can do to, you know, speed this whole process up and get this thing. You know, I mean. Could January, February get the? I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm not. This is your your. This is your business that you're in, and I'm just you know caught off guard by this whole thing. It just seems like it's taken a long time. Uh, well, yeah, and it, I guess it has. And we we've been we've been working hard since we since we made this decision. And I think that was a. It, it took a while to get to that point where where we said where everybody felt. Where, where we got the go ahead to actually uh, go through the, with this in earnest. And that was, I think, this summer? Yeah. And, and I guess that's why we're here tonight because to get to this point takes a lot of effort. There's a lot of back and forth, making sure the floor plans and meetings, getting some of these, the preliminary engineers in. And after tonight, if we get you know, your approval to continue the design, things are going to happen fast. And, and looking at it, and if you look at the IFC, we're looking to finalize the bid documents in February. We'll go out in March, good time, early spring to go out for bids. Contractors are looking for work over the winter. We, 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 don't want, we want to do the work after the April election. So we want to make sure the clerk's office, all the functionality of, of that for the election in April is, is not disrupted by having to move out in that so we can ensure that that um, transaction with the clerk's office for voting is seamless. Once that's done, we're looking to award in May, and construction start very soon in May. How about the day after the election? <laughs> It'd be a little hard, but I understand. Your, I, under, I understand what you're saying. Okay, I would make a motion to uh, approve uh, this preliminary and, and, and get things moving forward. 
second. Okay, thank you for that motion and support. Um, I just have one quick question. Did anybody want Daryl to just review some of the financial portions? Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I got a question on that once he, when he's done. Okay, well technically we have a motion and a second and we, and we can go into discussion. So, Elder Warren. Yeah, Daryl, you were probably gonna cover this, but uh, I see where you're planning on recommending borrowing $5 million out of the 7.5 and using 2.5 uh, from fund balance, uh, <coughs> looking into your crystal ball over the next year or so, do you think the fund balance would allow more, we would be able to take more out of fund balance and maybe borrow less? What, you know, where did you come up with this idea of five and 2.5 so far? Just to go through the numbers one more time, uh, assuming $11 million uh, price tag, uh, again, just trying to keep the numbers simple, I, uh, in the 2018 budget I identified 7.5 as a phase one, recognizing it's gonna be a 15 year construction period. So there will be in essence a... a I'm, thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, with a phase two being uh, 2019, so uh, with the $11 million price tag, it'd be 3.5 would be the remaining cost uh, in phase two, 2019. So 3.5 plus 2.5 uh, is gonna be $6 million uh, that I'm recommending uh, that the Common Council support using applied fund balance uh, between the uh, city's general fund, uh, between the city's capital project fund, we could easily accommodate uh, this amount. Uh, again, we've uh, been in discussions with our financial advisor, Carol Worth. Uh, we need to be sort of strategic when we uh, take money out of our fund balance <coughs> to not cause concern by Moody's credit uh, rating service uh, as, as we want to you know, assure you, the citizens, that we're not going to jeopardize our current uh, bond rating. Uh, as the city uh, has put together uh, it's it's a borrowing plan consistent with the latest uh, five-year capital improvement plan. Uh, we worked hard to uh, provide some capacity uh, for additional debt uh, and trying to minimize the financial impact uh, of the taxes or tax levy associated with making that debt service. So we think that we've, again, uh, during my uh, short time here in 2016, 2017, as we structured uh, our debt, again, good news, most of our debt is paid off in a, in a 10 year time frame. Uh, ultimately, this similar to a decision you made with the police station, we're looking closer to an 18 to 20 year for the long term debt service. Uh, for city hall projects, uh, the state has some restrictions, so it may uh, our debt ultimately may involve doing uh, a short-term debt uh, and then doing a refinancing in maybe a year year period of time uh, to ultimately get up to that 18 to 20 million dollar debt service. Um, so the the uh, just get a little bit into details here. So in the 2018 budget, there's a re recommendation for a 19 cent per thousand dollar increase. 19 cents per thousand uh, assessed increase assessed tax rate increase. That is anticipating basically the Im full implementation of the five-year capital improvement program, specifically adding uh, debt in, in 18. We will already incur some additional, some additional interest cost. Uh, and then again, we've, we've looked at, gosh, close to eight, nine years of, uh, of what the debt service will look like with the borrowings that are projected in that five-year plan. And we think Again, we built capacity in uh, for the next several years that other than this 300 and roughly $10,000, which is equivalent to that 19 cents per thousand, we don't anticipate the need, even with this project being roughly 5 million potential borrowing, we don't anticipate for the next five years a need to raise the tax rate associated with debt service. Um, going back to your comment, uh, do we need to borrow the five million? Is, is there some flexibility in that number? Again, uh, my initial comment is we, we have very solid um, financial status in our, in, as far as our reserves in our general fund and our capital projects fund. And if you as a council decided to limit the borrowing to four million, 
we could accommodate the rest of the project with using fund balance. So we're in a very good position. Thank you. Were there any additional questions? I guess I just wanted to follow up. Uh, one of the uh, advantage, one of the reasons why, again, I think Moody's Credit Service, our financial advisor, our, our own director of, of finance, uh, you know, is supportive of the use of the fund balance is that it's a, it's a significant project, uh, a hundred year project. If it was something that was going to gain the city benefit for maybe five, 10 years, then maybe not, not so supportive of this concept. But again, uh, we've gotten a hundred year use out of this existing building. Uh, Moody's and others recognize this is a, a significant investment, but for a very long term uh, facility for the community. Okay, thank you, dear Daryl. Any additional questions? Seeing. Just to follow up, um, uh, Daryl, when would we have to make a final decision then on the financing? When would you bring that forward? Uh, as, as I mentioned uh, in the 2018 budget, sort of the framework for at least the phase one uh, is alluded to. And again, based upon when we open <coughs> bids uh, sometime of the winter months, then we'll know the total cost. And then it's simply plugging in that number in 2019 to sort of finish the full cost phase two. Um, we'll know, you know, in, toward the end of December where we're at as far as additional savings. Uh, maybe beyond what was projected as far as our operating budgets to at least give most up-to-date information to the council as they make that decision whether to go with five million or a different number for borrowing. Uh, we typically would go out to borrow uh, uh, in, in May or April or May uh, because we're, we have a lot of projects, uh, including our utilities that are looking for in key infrastructure projects. We may be over that normal $10 million mark uh, again, not all tax levy supported, some are user fee related. So it's possible that there may be two borrowings uh, in calendar year 2018. That's it, thanks. All right. Any additional questions? And seeing none, we'll take a vote. Correct? Your public works committee. Okay, all right, sorry about that. Um, the next, uh, the next topic is going to be three. No, you just take a vote from Public Works. Okay. On the topic we were just talking about. Okay, so don't I have to adjourn and go into Public Works? No, you're in the topic right now. Yeah. You're in the topic. Okay. S so there's a motion. There need to be two votes: one from Finance and Personnel, and one from Public Works. Okay, so we'll we'll take a vote from, from public, public Works. works. The motion has been made and seconded. Yeah, close Correct. Out. So then we'll... Wait, how many members are here? Public Works. Well, there's John. Um, there's four. Yeah. So there's you just four. need to ask the four people that are here. Okay. All right. Brian, your vote, I guess, because we're going to do it verbally. Yep. So we're, we're back to recommend. Public, back to Public Works, according to the mo motion and second. So, and the motion was to... Recommend it to. Hold on. It, 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 so, could you read back the, the motion, please? Um, Mary Lynn made the second. She's not on public works. That is correct. So we have to have a different second. Sorry, Mary Lynn, your your second isn't doesn't qualify because oh, we're in right. public works. So, John, you made a you made a first. It was a joint meeting, so. Yeah, it's a joint I'm, I'm, meeting. I'm not sure why we're not acting as a joint committee, but. Right. Whatever. So either. Sure. Okay, so you're, okay, so we have a first and we have a second from Public Works. So then we need to take a vote. So you wanted a repeat of the I statement? I wanted uh, it, to have it read back what the motion was. Can because you reread re the motion? The, it was a, John's motion was to support moving the forward. moving forward with the, uh, with the Bray, Bray Architect. Aye. Okay. John? Aye. Aye. Chair also votes aye. Andy on? No, Andy's on. Andy is the other member. Andy, Andy. Is yeah, Andrew's not here. And Andy Ross is on, on finance. Okay. So that was everybody. 
Okay, so a motion, a motion is approved. Any, ag <laughs> any, ag any against? Seeing none. Again, it's approved. All right, I'm looking for a, a motion. Finance. Now we need a motion from finance. I would move that the um, resolution. I would move that the resolution uh, previously approved by the Public Works Committee be uh, approved by the Finance Committee. Second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none. <coughs> Ron. Aye. Andy. Aye. Jim. Aye. Todd. Aye. Chair votes aye. There are no dissenting votes. Now you need to adjourn. Looking, meeting. Yeah, looking for a motion to adjourn the joint meeting of Public Works and Finance and Personnel Committee. So moved. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All in, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. So I stand. Yeah. We'll take a three minute break. We're going to reconvene as Public Works Committee only.